Let's learn about Usnia. As always, the information contained in this video is for educational purposes only, and you should never put anything in your body that you've wild crafted unless you are a thousand percent sure that you know what it is. So with that, let's begin. So Usnia actually often gets sort of touted as being super easy to identify, and I'm sure in some places of the world it is. Here in Florida, though, we have a similar, like very close lookalike lichen called Remolina that grows with it. And because of that, it can be kind of tough sometimes to make sure that you're definitely getting Usnia because that lichen in particular can look pretty similar to the one that we're going for. We also have some other plants that are epiphytes, like our air plants, um, and also just other types of lichens that will sometimes grow in with the usnea. So I thought it might be nice today to share with you what, like how to garble usnea, how to go through it, and really just how to identify it. Let's start off with what usnea typically looks like. Well, if you Google it, you will come up with these gorgeous photos. It's it's called old man's beard often, or long, long beard lichen, or beard lichen it gets all these names and typically you see these pictures of this attached to a tree and these long thin fibers hanging down. So this is sort of what people are taught to look for when they are seeking out usnea. And if you look at these fibers, they're, they're long, they're thin, and they look pretty smooth. The thing is, is that usnea typically can get really hairy. So if you look in here, especially when it's not super old, you'll find that this guy has, oh, and I'm just looking like there's actually this, this little piece right here is a little tiny, a little tiny epiphyte growing. So let's, let's get that guy out of there. So there you go. Garbled. Yeah. 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 All right. So garbled right there. So there's a little epiphyte in there. So I'll show you how, how I could tell the difference. So let's take a look at that. So usnea typically has round fibers and it can be smooth like this, or it can be a little more hairy. So if you look right inside of here, let's see if I can find a good piece. Da -da. So right here, that is super hairy. And what I mean by that is the rounded pieces of the lichen will have what looks like little tiny filaments on it. This guy right here is also usnea. It actually has these, these little hairs that you're seeing are from Spanish moss. So we've got all sorts of epiphyte and lichen-y goodness going on in here. So this is also usnea. You can see this one has those little projections. They look like little hairs. They're not hairs, but they kind of, that's a great way to describe them to help you remember coming off of the branches of the, of the lichen. And you'll also see these, these little round pads. Here's a really good one. So lichens can reproduce asexually by just breaking off, but they also can produce sexually through the release of spores and other mechanisms from these little guys called the apothea. And so if you see a lichen that has this on there, it just means that it's 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 trying, or excuse me, if you see a uh, usnea specifically that has these guys on there, it just means it's 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 doing its thing, trying to make more lichen. So this is the same as this and that's why sometimes this can get kind of confusing because they look very similar. We also have a look-alike lichen, say that 20 times fast, called Ramelina and this whole pile right here is all Ramelina. So when I was garbling my lichen this morning, it, this is all mixed in with it. It's similar, it's another type of lichen and similar to Usnea, see if I can find one, yeah, it has like a single attachment point. So both of these little guys, like if my finger was a, a branch, it would be growing from one single attachment point. And look, there's a little tiny piece of usnea mixed in with it. So this is perfect. So you can kind of see the difference when the usnea is pretty hairy, it's, it's a lot easier to tell. Also the branches, for lack of a better term, that is not the correct bot botanical term, but we're gonna go with it. The little pieces that come off tend to be round in usnea. So here's, ooh, here's usnea. Hold on just a second. And then in ramelina, they tend to be flat. So if you look at this guy, you can see that a lot of those filaments are much flatter. The other thing too is they do have those, those little spore cups. You actually can see their, their little fruiting bodies. They look a little bit more cup-like. 
but Ramolina, I find, tends to be, like, color-wise, a little bit lighter gray, but don't necessarily take that as the only identifier. So you can see, like, the Uzni is more green, the Ramolina is a little more gray. So the best way to tell the difference between these two is, oh, here's a really good one. Let's see. Let's show you. So this Ramolina has that, that flatness, right? And so if I were to break one of these, it just, it just snaps right off. Like there's no, like it just, it, and it even feels like crinkly. Um, there's no resistance. It, it just wants to break apart in your hands, right? So you can see a really good one here. When I pull that, it just breaks apart, right? So nice and close pull, boop, it just breaks. Usnia is different. So the Usnia will have a filament. Let's see if I can show you. So when I pull this little apart, bit apart, it's almost like a tube. And there's, first of all, it's really tough to pull apart. And you can see there in my hand, whoop, eventually it snaps, but you see that tiny little white piece that's sticking out, that is the filament that we want to see in all Usnia. So if you're ever not sure, so for instance, if we tried it with this guy, let's find a good piece. Okay, here's a really good piece. So what you want to do is take it between your fingers and very gently pull it. Yep, and there you go. You could see like there's a little filament and it will eventually break. So don't think that it won't, it will. But the filament, there's, there's, when you tug on it, there's resistance and you should be able to see the little white filament. And of course, this is a lot thinner than the other piece. Please excuse my fingernails. I've been working with herbs and in the garden all morning. So, yep, that's, that's herbless life. When this guy, because it's so much thinner than say this one, right? So look at the difference in the thickness of those parts of the lichen. So this one, you will see a lot less white. On this one, it will be a little bit thicker. Okay, here we have an air plant of some sort. Uh, this is Tillandsia, very similar to, so this is a, this is a, uh, not a lichen. Very similar though, it tends to attach at one place. You can see its attachment point there. The filaments on this guy are also, they're actually kind of scaly, but they, they feel fuzzy and soft. If I were to, ah, try to pull apart, it just breaks um, very easily like that. So it's not gonna have the same filament as Usnia. And these tend to be a lot bigger, and they also tend to not be in a big clump like you usually find the Ramelina or the, the Usnia. So these were actually just mixed in with the other guys while, while we were garbling them. Another Uz, or excuse me, another lichen that you'll find sometimes in with the Usnia is this guy. So this is another type of lichen. Usnia is a frutios lichen, which means that it grows in long um, bits and typically has one type of attachment and then it's not really attached anywhere else to the tree. We also have crustios lichens, which look like they've been painted on. And then we have the one that's kind of in between the uh, folios, which is what this guy is. So if this were on the, the tree branch, it would be on there the way you see it kind of on my hand right now where it has some attachments but not a lot please so so look what is that that is a piece of the um, air plant so we're gonna get that out of there but this guy when you see it on a, a branch it'll be connected but it'll have almost like little waves like little pieces of lettuce that come up so this is not usnia this is some type of uh, folius lichen I don't know which one, because the thing about lichens is there, and you, you'll notice that um, we're using the genus. So this is this is the Usnia genus, this is the Ramelina genus. We're not saying real specific terms here because the identification relies on you doing things like looking at the, the little cups and the filaments under the micro, uh, microscope and stuff. And uh, I, 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 ain't nobody got time for that, but I can at least give you the general information to be able to identify this guy, which is my Usnia, from this guy, which is the not Usnia. So now that we know how to identify our Usnia, we are going to garble it. And that's kind of an old school herbalist term that means that we will be going through everything that we have wildcrafted or harvested out from nature and picking out all the pieces that we want to use to make our medicine. So now through the magic of time lapse, you'll see me garbling these guys. And this was a clump of Usnia that a friend gave me, which was awesome. 
And it doesn't matter if somebody gifts it to me or if I find it myself, I always make sure to go through to make sure that I'm taking out those other types of lichen, like the remolina. And if there's any critters in there, this is a good way to find them and remove them as well. So this is about an hour's worth of work, and what you see me doing is going through, pulling out any sticks, any pieces of wood, any other types of lichens, like the romelina, or if there's any folios lichens in there, kind of hidden in there, as well as the little pieces of Tillandsia, getting all of that out so that it can go into the dehydrator, and this is the end result. Now, I don't dehydrate all of my lichens that I collect. A lot of times I will leave them to dry, but because I wanted to use these a little bit quicker and powder them, I am dehydrating them. And I find that that makes them a little bit easier to powder. It's also doable to go ahead and put them in without drying right into your menstruum to make medicine. Just remember that with usnea and really any kind of lichen and most mushrooms, it works great if you double extract them. Hopefully you've enjoyed learning a little bit about Usnia and how to identify it and some of its lookalikes. I'm Misha from Cypress Pillar Healing Arts and Serpent's Kiss Herbals, and I'll see you next time.